for this tutorial, you will require a pot of Contrast Medium, Skeleton Horde, Gilliman Flesh, Sigor Brown, Basilicanum Grey, Magos Purple, Black Templar, Shaiish Purple, Gore Grunter Fur, Flesh Terrors Red, Blood Angels Red, Griff Hound Orange, Screaming Skull, Dawnstone, Retributor Armor, Liberator Gold, Grey Seer, Iron Warriors, Iron Hand Steel, Sunesh Grey, and Evil Sun Scarlet. So the place to start is with the armor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give all of the black armor a coat of Basilicanum Grey. And for this, I'm using a medium layer brush, and I'm just gonna grab some on my brush like this, and I'm just gonna pick an area to start. So I'm gonna start here on the leg. I'm just gonna start painting this Basilicanum Grey over all the parts that I want to be black. And I'm just going to be quite careful with it. Just making sure that I get that coverage on there. I'm going to try and avoid having any large dark patches like that. So for this area, I'm just going to pull that paint around because I don't want to kind of have too patchy a finish when I come to add the Black Templar afterwards. Once that Basilicanum Grey is dry, we're going to give it a layer of Black Templar. And this is just over all of those parts that we've painted with the grey. So we're just going to pick an area to begin. I'm going to start down here on the foot. I'm just going to start painting this Black Templar all over. Once that black Templar is dry, we're going to give all of those black armor panels a highlight of some thinned down Dawnstone. We just don't want very much on our brush, we just want to pick an area to start. So I'm going to start right here on the neck here. So I'm just going to draw a small edge highlight of this Dawnstone like this along these edges. With that Dawnstone highlight applied, we can now move on to the cape. And for this, we're going to be using Flesh Tear as red. So we're just going to take some of our brush and we're just going to start painting this all over the cape. And we want to avoid the fur because that's not going to be Flesh Tear as red. Uh, that's going to be a completely different color. So we're just going to paint this all over the smooth parts of the cape. Once that flesh tear is red as dry, we're going to add a little bit more depth to the cape just to make it look kind of, well, nice and evil. And what we're going to be using is Sigor Brown and then some flesh tear as red. So we take the Sigor Brown and we put it in the in the recess and then we use the flesh tear as red just to blend out that, um, that transition between the dark brown and the red. So we take our Sigor Brown, we pick a recess and it's going to be this big deep one here. I'm just going to pick an entry point around about there, and I'm just going to paint this cycle brown in there like that. So my brush quick wash, and then using the flesh terrors red along that edge where the brown and the red meet. Just going to paint this flesh terror's red in like that, just to give it a nice little kind of blended feel, like so. And as you can see, we now get some nice depth in there. As you can see, that cape is looking nice and shaded now. Um, but before we do a highlight on it, just to you know, give it a little bit of a, something to look at, we're just going to keep the flesh terrors red for the moment, and we're just going to paint in the hair of the top knot up here. So we're just going to put this flesh terrors red all over it, like this. And the reason we're doing it this way is so that we can use the same highlight for the hair as we can in the cape. And next up, we're going to highlight all of those red details with just a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet. So for the hair, we just want to pick out the strands by running this Evil Sun Scarlet 
along the sharpest point of those strands of hair, just to, just to pick them out, like this. And then on the exterior of the cape, we just want to pick out the sharpest areas. So down here in the little tears of the cape, we just want to run some of this evil sun scarlet like this, just to provide a little bit of an accent on these areas of the cloak, simply for the ones that are here. With that evil sun scarlet applied, we're now finished with the red. So we're gonna move on and we're gonna paint all of the gold details. And for this, we're using some thinned down retributor armor. And this is kind of for all of the trim that you'll find around the model. So like here on the shoulder pad, and there's various areas on the knees and on the hands and elbows and basically all over his armor. Um, you can find this stuff. Uh, so we're just going to be painting this Retributor armor over all of it. With those gold details painted in, we're now going to focus on the fur. And for this, we're going to be using two colors. We're going to be using Skeleton Horde and Gilliman Flesh. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a whole coat of Skeleton Horde. And then we're going to use Gilliman Flesh just to kind of add some, some kind of varied, varied color within certain areas of the, of the, of the, of the fur. So we take our Skeleton Horde and we just start painting it on to the fur, like this. You want to get a nice even coverage of this all over the model. Like so. Just coming up around here as well. So with that skeleton horde there, we then take the Gilliman flesh. We don't want very much on our brush, just some, around about that sort of amount, and just kind of add the Gilliman flesh in like this. And you can build this up as you go. So just going to take another. Another pass at it. Stabbing it on like that. And then next up on the fur, we're gonna add a little bit of fire slayer flesh and it's just gonna be kind of dabbed on at the at the base of the of the fur down here. So we just wanna kind of just almost just like stipple it on like this and we don't want to do too too much like that um just just a little bit here and there so we just want to kind of add some more on the back here as well like so with that fur all nice and complete we're now going to move on to the various tentacle like pipes that you can see scattered all over the model and there's a lot of them so the first color we're going to use is shayish purple and this is to give them kind of a, an organic feel but it'll look quite vibrant when we first put the coat on so we're going to need to do something else to try and kind of bring that down but for now we're just going to use this shayish purple all over these pipes like this with that shayish purple applied, we've now just got a few more base colors to do before we can start shading and highlighting the model. But as you can see, he's looking pretty darn good at the minute. So what we're gonna do is just do the rest of those base colors and then we're gonna move on. So what we're gonna use is Gore Grunter fur and this is for all of the wraps. So there's one on his hand, on his the haft of his hammer and there's the one up here on the top knot. So we just take a bit of that Gore Grunter fur on our brush and then we just start painting this over and this gives us quite a nice ready sort of brown, um, which kind of looks more like a sort of a soft brown wrap rather than something like a wildwood or a cycle brown. And next up, we're gonna use some skeleton hoard on the skull. Just like this. Just wanna get it on there. 
And next up, we're going to use some thinned down iron warriors to block in all of the silver parts. So this is things like the head of the hammer and the plasma pistol and any of that exposed cabling that you can see on all those purple cables that we've already painted in. So we just want to go around like this. Once those silver details are dry, we're now going to give all of the gold, silver and the purple parts a shade of Basilicanum Grey. But we're going to do this in two slightly different ways. So for the metallics, we're just going to, as per usual, we're just going to pick an area to start. So I'm going to start here on the shoulder pad. And I'm just going to start throwing this Basilicanum Grey on pretty much with reckless abandon. Um, I want it to be quite dark, beaten and weathered kind of. Uh, metals, you know, as it would be after having spent so long being a Chaos Space Marine. Um, but I want to be careful that I don't overwhelm any of the details too much. So I'm just going to use quite a lot, but I'm going to be quite considered and measured as I do it. Kind of like this. I'm just being extra careful when I get close to any of the details that I've already finished, like the fur. It's the same along here. Just want to add this basilicum and grey like this. Add a little bit more in there. Like that. So that's kind of how we want to do all of the metallic details. Whereas for the uh for the uh, pipes and the purple, we want to still kind of apply this basilicum grey over that silver stuff like, like we would normally. So like that to kind of get a nice dark and silver. But when it comes to the actual uh, things themselves, we just want to pick out like certain areas of it and just draw little lines of this basilicum grey over the purple. And this is to just desaturate it a little bit. And you don't want too much on your brush whilst you do this. You just want to kind of go around like this and it just kind of adds a little bit of an extra dimension to those cables as well as kind of just um, darkening them down like desaturating them a little bit because sometimes that purple can be a little bit jarring to look at because it looks so clean and wonderful. So we're just going to very carefully do this around all of these purple cables. So again adding it as per normal over the silver but then in here we're just going to kind of pick an area like we're just going to just draw a little line of it going like that over the cable. With that Basilicanum Grey shade applied, you can see the model has taken a massive leap forward and he's starting to look, well, he's starting to look pretty malevolent and dirty and, well, very grumpy as uh, only a Chaos Lord should be fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to now just kind of brighten up all of these areas and we're going to do the last few details. So we're going to start doing the gold and we're going to be using some thinned down Liberator gold for this. And all we want to do here is we want to do a edge highlight along all of these gold details. Like this. Um, and what this does is it just kind of gives the impression of the beaten, warm out, worn out metal rather than kind of like layering it up or anything like that. So we just want to go around and just we want to catch every edge of all of this gold. And once that liberated gold is dry, we're going to do exactly the same thing. But for the, all the silver parts, we're going to be using some thinned down iron hand steel for this. So we just want to pick out all of those silver edges with this paint just like this. With that silver applied, we're now going to do a little bit of a highlight on these cables. And for this, we're gonna be using Slanesh Gray. And all we wanna do here is we just wanna take a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of it on our brush. And we just wanna pick out the absolute sharpest parts. And this is generally around the areas where the, there's, there's, kind of, there's those gaps in the cables, like here. And around here. But this is also a good time to just apply a little bit of a spot highlight to any of the black details that you want the light to catch. So 
And Sinesh Grey just kind of gives it like a, almost like a malevolent feel to that black, rather than something like an administratum grey. With those Slanesh grey highlights applied, as you can see, the model is looking very, very close to completion. There's only a couple of things left to do, namely the face and a couple of glowing things around the rest of the model. So we're going to do the face first. I'm going to use Gilliman Flesh for this. So we just want to take a fair amount of it on our brush because we want to kind of do it as in with the kind of one pass, as it were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this model upside down and I'm going to start down here at the chin and work my way up. So I'm just going to make contact with the model at the chin and just pull this Gilliman Flesh up like this. And the reason for this is that I want most of the Gilliman Flesh to stay in and around the facial features here. And then I want a nice smooth finish at the top like that. So I can get a kind of a nice pale look around the skull. So we should get reasonably well shaded face like that. I just wanna kind of make sure that we get all of the skull around the back. Once that Gilliman flesh is dry, he's gonna start, well, he's gonna look rather healthy. And we don't want that for a Chaos Lord who's been sitting in the Eye of Terror for 10,000 years and has come to terrorise the Blackstone Fortress. What we want is we kind of want it to look a little bit sallow, a little bit kind of almost like he's inflamed skin. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a mix of roughly six to one of contrast medium and Magos purple. And this just kind of really makes the, 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 the glaze that we're going to use really, really, really thin. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add this around the facial features like this not going to go all over just want to add it around this front part of the face like this and this just starts to add some color into those cheeks. I just want to use it very sparingly going further up and back along the skull. So you just kind of want to build up that color down here. And then similarly, once again, we're going to do a mix of six parts medium, one part basilicon and gray, and one part Magos purple to give us this kind of washed out, sort of almost flesh, flesh-like inflamed color. And we're just gonna concentrate this around the deepest parts of the face. So we just wanna add it in there, in the cheek, and in there as well. And along here on the brow as well, in amongst that scar tissue that's going up. And finally, to finish off that face, we want to use just a little tiny bit of some thins down slanish gray once more. And we just want to put this on the absolute tips of the flesh. So this is things like tip of his nose and the bridge of his nose like that. And just going along the top of the brow here. And next up for the eyes and for the teeth, we just want to use some screaming skull. We just want to be very careful here we don't get any of the screaming skull on any of that skin that we've painted. So we just want to be very, very careful here. And then lastly, to finish off the eyes, we want to just use a tiny, tiny dot of black Templar right in the middle. like this. 
And with the face complete, we can now move on to the last couple of details. And these are the glowing plasma, this growth on his shoulder, and the inside of this octet on his hammer. So for the glowing parts, what we're going to do is we're going to use Griffhound Orange and Blood Angels Red together. So we're going to use Griffhound Orange first, and I'm going to start on the glowing plasma. So I just want to take some on my brush. I'm going to find the plasma. It's right there. I'm just going to paint this Griffhound Orange all over the plasma coil, like so. Use a bit more. There we go, like that. So, with that Griffhound Orange applied, I'm then going to take the Blood Angels Red. I want to draw a line of this, a very small line. I've actually got a little bit too much uh, paint on there. And I want to draw this down the middle of the top of the plasma gun. Like that. And along the side, just going along the middle. Like that. And this gives us a nice transition between the two colors as you can see gives you that impression of glowing along the edge similarly again on the uh, growth on his shoulder i'm going to grab that griffhound orange i'm just going to put this all over this little nub in here like so Make sure it's got a nice strong coverage and then wash the brush we take a little bit of the blood angels red and then just around that kind of top top thing there that you can see on the on the on the on the growth i'm just going to draw this blood angels red around it like this And this gives us that kind of transition between the orange and the red that we're after. Like that. For the inside of that hammer, whilst I've got you, we're just going to get some of that Blood Angels red. And we want to be very, very careful as we do this, but we just want to run this inside that recess like this. And as you can see, the model is now complete. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you find it useful when painting your Black Legion Chaos Space Marines or indeed your Blackstone Fortress set. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.